This problem is about calculating the center of mass. A 2 meter long rod has a non-uniform density given by r of x is equal 1 plus x cubed minus x squared kilograms per meter, where x is the distance from one end of the rod, measured in meters. Calculate the center of mass of the rod. Let's underline two key phrases that will help us understand this problem. The first key phrase is a non-uniform density. The second key phrase is the center of mass. Let's figure out what these phrases mean and how they will help us solve the problem. Because we are trying to find the center of mass of a long rod, we can assume the problem is one-dimensional. What that means is the density is the mass per length. The trick is the density is not constant throughout the rod. The second key phrase was the center of mass, and that is the whole point of the problem. Our object has a density which is continuous throughout its whole length. Therefore, the center of mass will be some sort of integral. However, all we really need to understand is what is the center of mass for individual points. For masses lined up on a line, the center of mass is always the weighted average of their position divided by the total mass. For two points, that weighted average is the first location times the first mass plus the second location times the second mass, all divided by the total mass. For three points, the idea is the same. It's the first location times the first mass, plus the second location times the second mass, plus the third location times the third mass, all divided by the total mass. We will need to calculate the center of mass for many more than just two and three points. For generic n points in a line, the center of mass will be the first location times the first mass, the second location times the second mass, so on and so forth until you get to the last location times the last mass, that's xn times mn, and we divide by the total mass, which is simply adding up all the mass involved. Let's use the expression for the center of mass for a discrete number of points applied to our problem. We are working with a two meter long rod whose density changes as you move along the rod. So we can take this end to be x equals zero and we are told that the density will be r of x is one plus x cubed minus x squared. We need to try to use the expression for center of mass for a discrete number of points for this continuous object. A good way to do that is to chop it into small pieces. We now fix capital N to be the total number of pieces. Eventually, we will let that go to infinity. But for right now, we keep it fixed. We can assume that the mass is constant on each piece. So therefore, we need to write an expression for the mass and the location on each piece, then add them up and divide by the total mass. If we focus on the ith piece, we should take its density to be the function r evaluated at the location xi. We need to write down an expression for the mass at the ith location. We know that density is mass per length, so therefore mass will be density times the length. Using what we know about the density and the fact that it's constant on the ith piece, we have r of x sub i times delta x. Remember our expression for the center of mass. It was the first location times the first mass plus all subsequent locations and masses 
until we get to the last location times the last mass divided by the total mass. Now we can plug in our expression for the mass at each location. That gives the center of mass is x1 times r of x1 times delta x plus all the way down to xn times r of xn times delta x all divided by r of x1 times delta x plus similar terms all the way down to r of xn times delta x. Our approximate expression for the center of mass should look very much like a Riemann sum. It's a little bit funny because there's a Riemann sum on top and a Riemann sum on bottom. So we will expect to get an integral on top and an integral in the bottom. Our approximate expression for the center of mass gave us a Riemann sum in the numerator and a Riemann sum in the denominator. When we let the number of pieces go to infinity, which is n, delta x goes to zero, and we recover an integral in the numerator and an integral in the denominator. That is, the integral from zero to two of x times r of x dx divided by the integral from zero to two of r of x dx. Notice, the reason why the lower limit is zero and the upper limit is two is because this is the leftmost value of x in the picture, and this is the rightmost value of x in the picture. Let's compute each integral separately and then put our answers together to get the center of mass. The first integral to compute is the integral from zero to two of x r of x dx. We were given r is equal to 1 plus x cubed minus x squared. Therefore, we need to compute the integral from 0 to 2 of x plus x to the fourth minus x cubed. To compute this integral, we can anti-differentiate term by term and then take the difference of the values at the endpoints. Evaluating this last expression, from x equals 0 to x equals 2 gives 22 fifths as our answer for this integral. Our second integral is to compute the integral from 0 to 2 of r of x dx. Again, we were given the expression for r, so we need to compute the integral from 0 to 2 of 1 plus x cubed minus x squared. Again, we anti-differentiate term by term and then we will evaluate at x equals 0 and x equals 2. That gives 10 thirds is our answer for the second integral. We can now finish with a value for the location of the center of mass. We computed both integrals separately, so the center of mass is 22 over 5 divided by 10 over 3. The center of mass is located at x equals 33 over 25 meters measured from the left end of the rod. Let's do a quick recap. Our first step was to write down the center of mass for a finite number of points on a line. The center of mass is the first location times the first mass plus all the similar terms until we get to the last location times the last mass all divided by the total mass. Second, we chop the object into n pieces. Assuming that the density is constant on each piece, we can use the formula for a finite number of pieces. That gives an approximate expression for the center of mass. Our approximate expression for the center of mass turned out to have two Riemann sums one in the numerator and one in the denominator. The numerator involved the function x times r of x and the one in the denominator involved the function r of x. Finally, we let n go to infinity to see that the center of mass was the integral from 0 to 2 of x times the quantity 1 plus x cubed minus x squared
divided by the integral from 0 to 2 of 1 plus x cubed minus x squared. Both of these integrals were easy to compute. 